Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So I'm Xavier Poir. I've been working at uh, Ubisoft for 15 years now and managing the French studio for the last eight. Let me just start something. So I will be having a co-host. Yeah! Our friends, women, our little French mascot, just to remind us that uh, gameplay needs to be at the heart of a breakthrough if we really want to change the way we play. And actually, very often, we need some technical innovation to inspire us at first. And speaking of innovation, I'm using uh, UbiArt Framework, which is the engine that we've been developing in Montpellier to create Rayman Origins and Rayman Legends. So let's go. Actually, be aware of the fist, yes. Actually, uh, Rayman is a very good example of how creativity and innovation are mixed all together. Because when we speak about innovation, it's, of course, opportunities, it's also constraints. And back then, in the 90s, so long ago, nobody remembers, but at this time, it was uh, really hard to render full body animation. So Michel Ancel, his creator, decided to give him no arms, no legs, because it was uh, easier this way, so he could really concentrate and put all his efforts on the game design. So before we go into details, let me introduce you to the French studios. We have Paris, here, Annecy, there, and Montpellier. Uh, thinking about it, it would be a great holiday to spend in France if you visit our studios. You have the lights and the culture in Paris, the great lake of Annecy and the beautiful Alps, and obviously in Montpellier, the nice weather and the Mediterranean Sea. We have uh, 700 passionate developers in France that when they're not busy eating croissants or wearing speedos on the beach, uh, for those in Montpellier only, of course, uh, they have really work, worked hard to develop and create a famous brand within Ubisoft. Uh, Beyond Good and Evil in Montpellier, the rabbits at the launch of the Wii, Rayman, obviously, King Kong in the past, uh, in Paris, Ghost Recon, the franchise, have been uh, revamped thanks to the launch of the Xbox 360 in 2006. Uh, Red Steel on the Wii. More recently, Just Dance was created in Paris. And ANSI is really dedicated to online gaming, creating uh, some multiplayer side of solo games at first. Splinter Cell, for instance, and for three years now, Assassin's Creed. Some of the franchises are very well known, have been huge success, some less, but all these titles are really sharing one thing, one thing in common. All these titles have tried their best to leverage new technology, to give the best creative use of a new technology. And actually, you could say that it's almost a French speciality of ours to launch new games on new console. A majority of these titles were launched games. We've launched <laughs> Rabbits and Red Steel on the Wii. Once again, Ghost Recon at the launch of the X360. And then Zombie U, uh, Roman Legends uh, on the Wii U. Sometimes we really need new toys to play with in order to really uh, encourage our, uh, our creativity. And innovation and creativity are really linked together. I mean, innovation needs creativity, of course. Uh, for us, creating a game at the launch of console is really the opportunity to think differently. Um, it's a mix of constraints and opportunities, because of course the opportunity at first of creating a game on a new system will turn into concern, sometimes into a nightmare. You all know that. Yes. Thank you, Raymond. Designing for launch, it's really something we try to be good at in our French studios. Uh, this is was the true moment of innovation, because it's this moment where you just have you know, the headlines of a new technology. You don't have any benchmark on the market. 
because by definition, no other game had been released on this new system. Um, of course, you aim at doing a system seller to create a game that will be the game the most uh, interesting to play on this uh, new console. And with the experience we had, sometimes the gaming, gaming revolution that we have found uh, didn't come from where we were expecting them at first. So let's go into some details. But first, let me explain the difference between games that are launched. Oops, it hurts. Uh, launched on a new system, how they are different from games that are launched during the cycle of a console. But basically, because you are building your game, which is hard enough to do, in parallel with the development of the new hardware. This is a time to market game, by definition. So you have little time to accommodate to the new technology. Sometimes you will have to teach players how to master this new technology, and sometimes to overcome some skepticism about it, obviously. Of course, everybody will ask you to create a new engine because you absolutely need new tools to, take, uh, to, to benefit from this technology. Last generation was about you know, the multi-threading, the shaders, all these uh, things uh, push us to create a, a new engine. And you have absolutely no guarantees about who will adopt the system, what will be the final audience of the system. So it's about you and your intuition, which is good. <laughs> uh, hard, but good. And sometimes it's only your intuition that can help you to separate the very good ideas, so ideas that will really change the way you can play from what we can call the false good ideas. That means something that will disappear, that appears to be a good idea at first, but that will disappear in the future. So these are launch games that we launch in parallel to new console. And let me show you some experience we had in a French studio working on these titles. First, Ghost Recon. The arrival of the next generation, Xbox 360 and PS3 mostly, really helped us in expanding our design. And Ghost Recon, when it was launched, at the launch of the console, really um, had this impact of being one of the really first next generation uh, titles. For us, the high capacities of the new console were a mean to create the design we've ever wanted for this brand. That, mean, that means, obviously, creating a game where you can really feel immersed in a battlefield, uh, being a special forces on this battlefield to create very large maps and to render a level of quality and immersion that was never seen before in terms of shaders, of quality, of the light, of the sound. That was not possible before. And we added to that the possibility to turn this battlefield into a battlefield of tomorrow. So give the players new tools to play with, drones, cameras that enable the player, if you want to switch from one player to one teammate, from one player to a drone that can be low on the ground, very high in the sky, with the same quality each time, and of course, a very good frame rate. That was what Ghost Recon achieved thanks to this new generation. But I think a huge breakthrough arrived at the launch of the Wii uh, with the motion control. Kinect, later on, broke the same thing on X360. Actually, what it broke was intuitivity for the control. It was a really good way to get new entrants in our industry, new entrants in the, the, the gaming. Uh, actually, because suddenly all the controls were intuitive. It was not you and your ability and your skills to work with this kind of tool. It was really about the controls to be an extension of your hands with a remote and unshock or of your whole body. So we decided to seize upon this opportunity to study many metaphors around your body as an actor. The first one we came with, because we're kind of geeks, and the first time we hold a remote in our hand, was really about sword fighting, of course. So we wanted to create an experience uh, on the fantasy of sword fighting. We also have added uh, the gun fighting because 
it was also acting. With a Wiimote and an Unshuck, you can do movement like this, you can shoot. So it was giving new controls that were very, very intuitively easy to, to handle. And in retrospect, uh, the motion control at this time and our ability to, to use them uh, were a limitation. We, we faced a limitation because we couldn't render the whole fantasy of uh, doing both at the same time. We also took this opportunity to use another aspect of the motion control. Not only it brings uh, as a new actor your body, but also a new actor came as a living room. And suddenly, it was as fun to watch people play that as fun to play yourself. It was not anymore in the screen, that was something happening, but outside the screen as well. So we decided to create a game out of it, um, and a game based on comedy. So we've studied and prototyped a lot of crazy moves that you can do with a Wiimote and Nunchuck at first, and then with the balance board, and to build a game around that, just to render the fun aspect of seeing during a party game people play together and do silly moves, like uh, tossing cows or popping carrot juice. Uh, at the launch of the balance board, we also create, I think, the first video game ever when you can play with your butt, which was a snowboarding game where you were seated on the balance board. So with the Wii, social gaming was really born. And we pushed it a little further with the creation of Just Dance. Actually, Just Dance is an extension of the mini game that was first created on Women Waving Rabbits, which was a game where we still have the nunchuck and the Wiimote, and we needed to perform some moves. But in between the Wiimote and the nunchuck, there still is this wire, you know? It's part of the innovation. And we had a lot of debates in order to... We wanted to do a dancing game where you know, you are disinhibited, you, you just go and you dance. But there was this wire in between, so we decided to, to take only the remote. Actually, it sounds uh, easy to say like this, but back then it was like, you know, coming to your designer and saying, oh, I've got an idea. Let's get the joystick and whip, off, whip it off from the, the game controller. So it was not so easy to, to, to tackle. What did we decide to do, though? And then we did something good. It was really turning uh, an innovation, which is Nunchuck and Wiimote, into an emotion, which is really the emotion of dancing. And actually, it's the same for the rabbits. It was turning this innovation of enabling moves that can be very nice to play in a game, but also very nice to see when you're out there, turning this innovation into an emotion. It could be done only by pushing the limits of the controller. So just then, it was... Uh, was born. And the question that uh, we are raised at, at this time, and that you can raise when you're building a game with a new technology, are do, we, do new people play and do they play differently? And we, uh, the answer we had on Just Dance uh, is yes. Motion control is, uh, was a revolution, a real revolution. It attracts so many people in the industry. The next one, who is already there, but still to be developed, uh, it's a multi-screen approach. It's Nintendo, again, that decided to really create a console out of it, with a second screen in it. Oh, Rayman is slow. I think there is some lag. OK. So we've brought it up a lot with a new system. What came to our mind quite easily and rapidly was the fact that now you could play different have different experience on the same game. It's what we call the asymmetrical gameplay. On Zombio, for instance, and actually we showed that one, one year prior to the, three, um, with the launch of the, the Wii U, sorry, um, with a game called Killer Freaks, it was all about having two different experiences on the same game. One player was holding the gamepad, play FPS, and the other ga the gamer was using the gamepad, the Wii U gamepad. So there was one player FPS, another one that could be 
anybody that doesn't play FPS. He just had to use the screen of the Wii U gamepad and sending, in this case, was zombies um, in a room uh, where the FPS player was. So it was like mixing a RTS kind of play with a FPS uh, uh, play, both in the same environments and in the same game. Rabbit's Land, that we have launched, uh, the launch of the, the Wii U as well, was a collection of mini games again, organized in a party game, only based on this asymmetrical gameplay. Where it's very funny because depending on who you are, you have a totally different experience on the same game. And for Just Dance as well, we really have seen this uh, Wii U as an opportunity to uh, add a new player to the party. Actually, even if on Just Dance we really want everybody to dance, there's still one person, usually it's a guy, that sits over the coach that doesn't want to move. So we've created a game for him. Just based on the screen, very intuitively, he can select what we call the, the puppet master mode. He can select the next move that the players will have to perform. He can also select the next song. He can also paint and write on the screen and it appears on the TV. So it's really to have different gameplay all together and attracting new players that have different kind of habits on the game. <coughs> Back to the emotion, we also take a look at what this new screen can bring to the player in terms of experience. And it was funny because at the start, uh, when we playtested it, uh, people were quite, uh, you know, um, complain sometimes about having to look at two screens, not necessarily at the same time, but to go from one screen to the other. We really thought that there was something there. And we went deeper, and we just tried to find what kind of emo emotion does it bring. And actually, it can bring some surprise, can bring some stress to the player. That's why we thought that the fit with the survival horror kind of game was there. And we created Zombie U with, you know, the two screens twice the fear. <laughs> Multiple screens are there. Even if people were kind of complaining on Zombie U at first, you know, it's every day, I think. I mean, most of you have probably ordered their Christmas gifts um, on internet while checking uh, on the TV. I mean, it's 86% it's of people that are using a portable device in front of the TV. And just 25% of those people are doing something in relation to what they're seeing. The rest is doing something else. So this is really something we need to take into account with our brands, our brands that have been created on HD first. And this cross platforming is really interesting. On Ghost Recon Future Soldier, we really wanted the player to be able to carry the Ghost Recon brand anytime, anywhere. So we used different uh, devices, and we created some applications where you could, you know, select a weapon, prepare his gear for the next uh, party you will have, and to customize his gun. He can do that uh, on the way back home, for instance, and when he comes back, it's automatically synchronized uh, with the console. So he has 24-7, he can play uh, wherever he is, he can play with Ghost Recon. He can play with the core of the game, which is uh, in this case, customization of weapon. And Rayman is a good example, too. We really wanted, before porting Rayman and adapting Rayman to these new devices, we really wanted to have the, the same kind of quality of visual, the quality of sound, the quality of immersion um, that the world of Rayman is bringing. So we just adapted the gameplay. It was really about um, finding what is really interesting on this device and create the gameplay that was, uh, that was there, based, of course, on the Ray-Ban brand, um, with you know, uh, missions that are very faster, of course, that are, that are uh, of course, shorter in terms of time. <laughs> so we're in Vegas, of course. So uh, Gumball doesn't pay a lot. I think when it's um, about creative, uh, creativity and innovation, 
when you're launching a game on a new console, it's really something that uh, we need to try. In those moments, when you can really touch what the core of an innovation and really feel sometimes that you are looking at a revolution in gaming. And it's not only with this number of constraints that are enormous when you're launching a game uh, at the launch of a console that you can really find those moments. And eventually, it will bring new people to come to the industry, new people to play. It can also bring new people with different skills or habits in gaming to play together. The best moments, of course, is really when you can turn this innovation into an emotion. Thank you.